What's up, y'all? It's Aunt Liz and it's Bob Sun TV. And today we got the Aunt Cannon story. You and six mask thieves ambushing a pair of armored car drivers at Hyde Park, pinning them to the ground before making off with thousands of dollars in cash. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 500k subscribers. Appreciate all y'all and all supports. Aunt Fine, we in the building. Uh, to all the kids, I don't like to glorify violence or things that happen in the streets, but some people live these lives and some people don't. I choose that y'all choose a better choice than he did. So, Aunt Cannon, if y'all know what it is, this is his nickname, Aunt Cannon. His real name is Anthony Cannon. I know him. I'm going to tell y'all how I know him. I don't know him personally, but I know of him. He got two younger brothers. I'm going to do a two, part two because his younger brother tried to live up to his footsteps. And they end up getting jail time, too. They've been locked up 10 years plus. So there will be a part two to this. He got a brother named Juju and Gene. They identical, for real, for real. They look alike. They not identical, I mean. They not identical, but you would think they twins. They not really the same age. One might be a little bit older than the other, but not too far apart. I know they father South. He used to be my old football coach. I met them in 1996. Juju and Gene played for Lamar Ray Stillers. And I played for Walker's Hornets. Our team was good. No, our team was bad, and their team was good. And they uh, something with their coach, they ended up coming to play for Walkers. Juju and Gene came to Walkers. We became friends. I was the man already over there. I was six years old, seven years old. So we played football together from about, I'm going to say, about six years old to about 13. Juju ended up going to Beacon House, playing for Beacon House Falcons. But Gene ended up staying playing with us. Man, Gene probably won two, three championships. After Juju left, Juju was a little bit younger than us. And Juju was a little brother. Gene, the older brother. The man grabbed a bag of money, then took off firing shots as he was getting away in a getaway car. The security guard fired back, but the robber got away. So, they always used to talk about their brother. We both got older brothers with stories. I used to always tell them about my brother, the streets talk about my brother, everybody speak on my brother. They got a brother too, the streets talk on them. He got a representation, he got a name out here too. So they always just tell stories about their brother. I used to tell stories to them about my brother, but our brothers never was out of jail. They always led them lives like youth service center kings. Like, and Cannon was always in youth service center. I never seen them or never nothing. I just always heard from Juju and Jane for years about their brother. So later on in life, Life came on. We stopped playing football. This was years later. We was like into our adult years. We was 18 plus. We had still had a relationship. Like we were still cool. We mutual friends. We see each other over town. If I see them out, I, I might kick with them mutual. But they got a relationship with Shy Glizzy. You know I used to hang around Shy Glizzy. So they started coming around towards the time before they went to jail, before they did what they did, they ended up going to jail. So long story short, we old and we adults and we grown. They brother ended up coming home from jail. I don't know how much time he had. This is probably like seven years later. We, I finally seen a face to the Aunt Cannon I've been hearing about for years since I was a kid. All the stories they tell me about their brother. The streets just talk about their brother. You just hear Aunt Cannon name everywhere. I've been just a wild kid. So long story short, he come home. As he come home, his name just started ringing bells all over the city. When I mean ringing bells all over the city, I mean like a fire alarm. Aunt Cannon just did this. Aunt Cannon just did that. Aunt Cannon just went to the club. They bought 200 bottles. And when it comes to this money thing, they doing this money thing. Like This at the time where $50,000 and $100,000 in 2011, 12, 13, 14, stuff like that. $100,000 was a million dollars in Washington, D.C. Now, under the pandemic, money ain't really that serious because everybody touched the money now. So, you know how fast 100000 can go because everybody blew that 100000 already. So, they had hundreds of thousands before hundreds of thousands was cool. They was up. They was living a lifestyle like the whole the whole hood was loving them. They was putting niggas on. They had a little crew. He had a little crew. He ran with a little crew, a little robber crew. They was like little robbers, the jackers. So, Cannon came home and resorted back to his old ways as a robber. Washington, D.C. man sentenced to 75 years in prison for armed robbery and carjacking shootings. According to the evidence presented at Cannon's two-week trial on October 26, 2012, Cannon, Tawny Floyd, and Marcellus Ramon Freeman, a.k.a. 
Derek Rolando Pitts, driving a stolen Jeep, followed a Garda Cash Logistics Armored Transport Vehicle to the Cricket Store located in the 3000 block of University Boulevard East, Tacoma Park, Maryland. A Garda employee exited the armored truck, went into the store, and picked up a bag containing $3,911. As the police returned to the armored truck, he was confronted by two cone conspirators with guns. He explained the robber from street robbing. He ain't no street robbing, little convenience stores, local law, petty robberies, little breaking in cars. He ain't on that no more. Now in your armor trucks, banks, big money. He trying to go for the gusto. So now you just hear and Canada I'm just robbing the bank, just the streets saying, and Canada I'm just robbing the bank, the streets talking this, that, and there. Then you will see and Canada on Instagram, he might post a safe, like literally he might post a safe, a branch truck safe with the money hanging out of it on Instagram. I don't know how he did it or why he did it, but he did it. So as he did that, everybody started getting attracted to him, like the streets started getting attracted to him, like the rumors they was hearing about him was really true because he was living in, he in a club every night, popping balls, he living a movie star life, like a rich hood life, robber life in his, in his lifestyle. And it's just glorifying to the streets. The streets love him, like they love him. He's at his highest peak right now. He ain't tripping off the police or nothing. He bang it out with them. That ain't nothing, all means necessary. The Garda employee dropped the money bag and a, at least one co-conspirator fired a gun at the employee. The employee shot back. One of the co-conspirators picked up the money bag. The co-conspirators ran back to the stolen Jeep. As the co-conspirators drove away, the police continued to fire his handgun at the Jeep, striking a tire in the back window. Floyd was wounded in the shoulder during the gunfire. The co-conspirator left the Jeep in a neighborhood nearby because it had fl a flat tire as a result of the shooting. They saw a man entering a vehicle and shot the man in the arm and a head, causing permanent and life-threatening bodily injury, then stole his vehicle. They drove the vehicle into the District of Columbia, where they set it on fire. So now they come home, we got the biggest name in the streets. He got the biggest name in the streets. It's the biggest robbers in the streets, him and his crew. But they ain't like street robbers. They robbing banks. They on armor um, trucks. They on all that. They busting moves. I want to broke chill y'all. So if y'all hear squeaking, just bear with me. I'm trying to make it stable as possible. So they robbing banks, busting bank moves. So as they going on, they bank moves, him and his crew, they done robbed a couple of um, trucks. Now they got the bag, got the money. The police and the FBI's on their not They lying now because, come on, it's um, trucks and bank robberies and federal stuff going on. This is Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. ain't breed no bank robbers, um, truck drivers, robberies or none of that. So they robbed a couple of bank trucks. Him and his crew got away with it. They feeling untouchable now. Now they feeling untouchable. They go bust one more bank truck robbery. Him and his crew, they end up getting caught. Police evidence personnel recovered blood containing DNA of Floyd from the back of the seat of the Jeep. Floyd went to the hospital in the District of Columbia for medical treatment of his gunshot wound on October 26, 2012 at approximately 8.20 p.m. The Garda money bag was found in the Jeep and the bag had Freeman's finger and palm prints upon it. A drink bottle was recovered from the front console area of the Jeep that had DNA of Cannon on the top area that would have come into contact with his mouth when drinking. And as they got caught... They went to jail, and then as they went to jail, they was caught from there. Like, it was no, it was no, all they luck ran out. They stayed solid, though. I don't think none of, I don't think none of his crew told or nothing. They stand up, man. They all stayed solid. But I told you, he got a brother, two brothers, Juju and Gene. They idolize him. They look up to him. I knew them since they was kids. We grew up together since 1996. I know they father. I said, spend like their mother house, vice versa. Gene slept on my mother couch. You feel what I'm saying? I know Gene personally. Gene ain't Gene. Gene is not a gangster. Not into he quiet. He he not no sucker though. He ain't no sucker. He just quiet. He don't even talk. You might not hear his voice. If he don't trust you, he won't even speak to you. If he don't know you, he won't even speak to you. He not in the streets at all. Like, like he in the streets because he grew up in there. What I mean, but he don't have a street personality like you. He could sit up in the office me and like he humble. You could that's like say if you have a daughter and you give her a boyfriend and he come home, he'd be respectful to the family. Gene is that type of person. So Juju and Gene seen that their brother had got locked up and he came home, had this glistening glamour for the money. Juju always been a high head though. Juju, Juju really like, they street guys, but they turned like, after their brother went to jail and got caught for the last time and he got all that time, he stuck and they was just sitting at home broke and they just living off their brother name. 
They like, man, we gotta live up to our brother name. So I guess they went and tried to rob an armor truck too. They first armor truck move they ever went on. They got 20 years plus from it. They got locked up caught in the scene. That's gonna be part two. I'm gonna break down their case and their story. The twin brothers, and can not twin brothers, but I'm gonna call them twins to the sound brother. The sound battle on YouTube. The two brothers and Aunt Cannon did the same thing he did and got locked up. He, he feel like a real nigga. His little brother looked up to him and they failed. I got a brother. I love to look up him too, but I can't fail. Like, and then these guys go to jail and get these. I'm just not being biased in this story. I know Juju and Gene personally. They're street guys. They was born in the streets, but far as them going hard, being tough, this probably was the first thing they ever did. Like, this is probably, they, they was off the porch three months. This is Gene. That was Gene's first charge ever. That was probably his first time ever putting handcuffs on his wrist. He got 20 some years. You feel what I'm saying? That's what type of people they was. They gonna play a facade because they gotta keep the image and the tuck out image. They was good kids. I swear to God. They had, they mother had a big house. Like, I ain't gonna say where is that, but they father, they father gamble real good. You know what I'm saying? They ain't had no bad upbringing. They from Rock Creek. They from Rock Creek for real. The evidence also included a recorded call between Cannon and an inmate at Prince George's County Detention Center in which Cannon acknowledged his participation in the crimes and expre expressed disappointment in leaving an evidence trail in the stolen Jeep. So Cannon ended up going to jail and tell y'all his case. The streets, y'all know the streets follow it and all that. So when he went to jail, he had a representation. He had a reputation. So the judge said something to him. They said he spit at the judge or told the judge something crazy. He had got 75 years plus the life sentence. He had, they charged him with so many other robberies that he did. They put it all together. I'm going to break it down, break down the case, and let y'all see. U.S. District Court Deborah K. Calcino sentenced Anthony Terrell Cannon, age 26, of Washington, D.C. today, to 75 years in prison, followed by five years of supervised release for conspiracy, robbery, carjacking, and two counts of discharging a gun during a crime of violence and interstate transportation of a stolen vehicle in connection with an armored car robbery and a carjacking in which a victim was shot in the arm and head. Mr. Ann Cannon's story, y'all. What you tell me, was it worth it? Bob or something? <laughs>